life is rough. You gotta take the time to focus on what brings you joy. As the Japanese say, ikigai. Or, what am I nerding out about right now? <laughs> Join us at the gaming table. Or reading nook. To find your happiness. I'm Lainey. I'm Marshall. And this is Elated Geek. Hello and welcome to Spinner Rack Kids. This is actually going to be the first of a couple of Spinner Rack Kid episodes because Marshall is busy working on some creative projects of his own. And so it'll be just me, Corey, for now. This episode is about detectives and mysteries. And we're going to start with a comic that I discovered, I'd say, probably about six or seven years ago. It's called Goldie Vance. Now, you've heard me talk a lot about all-ages comics. We're actually going to be doing one, and probably the next episode will be all just specifically all-ages comics. Those are comics that the whole family can enjoy. And this is a great example of that. Goldie Vance is a young woman detective, African-American actually, and it's set in the 50s in Florida. Like in like, I'd say the Miami area, although they use fictitious names. Her father works at a hotel, so she's kind of like insinuating herself into the whole hotel detective business. The, this hotel actually has a hotel detective, and she kind of annoys the, the guy by trying to get in on the cases and always find some kind of mystery to get herself into. It's very light. It's very fun. The color scheme is bright and sunny like Florida. And it's just great, a great period elements like drag racing. She's actually a valet at, at the hotel. It's, that's her actual job. And so it's just a lot of fun. A lot of this one, in this case, is Olin Jules mystery, but it also involves other things of the time period like space travel and stuff like that. So very highly recommend. There's actually, I believe, like three volumes of it, maybe even four that are available. And it's a Boom comic. Again, you're going to hear Boom mentioned a lot on this podcast because we really like what the stuff they're doing. The next comic we're going to talk about is The Hardy Boys and Nancy Drew, The Death of Nancy Drew. Now, this is from Dynamite Comics. I have been impressed with Dynamite. The, the one thing that they struggle with sometimes is the art is a little subpar or it's kind of wanting. That is the case here where the, the story is good. Like the title kind of tells you everything. The Hardy Boys are investigating the apparent death of Nancy Drew. And all all kind of mysteries in her town. They're they're from another town. Spoiler warning. But if you if you judge books by their art, you might want to skip this one. But I I enjoyed it overall. The story. I just wish the art could have been stronger. So I've been personally avoiding Batman comics recently, just because there is such a wealth out there, and my curiosity is taking me down different roads and different other subjects, but because this was about detective fiction, I needed to, you know, hunt down a good Batman story, and I could have gone into one of the great graphic novels that I kind of had been rereading over the years, but then I noticed this new title come up called Batman the Detective, so I figured I'll give this one a shot, and it's a miniseries. The art is really great. It's by uh, Andy Kubert, who is known for doing the last volume of The Dark Knight Returns, The Master Race, and it is fun. I really like it. It, it kind of delves in the past of Batman's, Bruce Wayne's past, of like when he was learning his trade. So it incorporates Henri Ducard, which some of you might recognize the name from Batman Begins. It's the alias Liam Neeson goes under when he's pretending not to be Ra's al Ghul, who he really is, the subterfuge he uses. And so this actually starts in the modern day and then kind of shows you the past where Henri Ducard is one of the the many masters or trainers that set Bruce Wayne up to be the greatest detective, the Batman, in the in the future. And so he meets him in present day, but it also goes into their into their past. And there is a, a villain named Equilibrium who is threatening killing people as villains do. And she's dressing up like a white costumed Batman with a horde of other Batman. It's that's really fun. And he also meets his uh, character Squire, who he set up, I believe, with. The Batman Incorporated. If you're not familiar with Batman Incorporated, my fanfic version of the end of Dark Knight Rises when he's off with in Europe with Selina Kyle 
is that he's setting up Batman Incorporated. Because in the comics, what he did was kind of in the way that Tony Stark said the world needs protection, Bruce Wayne went around and made a corporation out of Batman in the sense that he funded Batman in their own native countries. So all different kinds of Batman. And so this Robin that he meets in this book is Squire, and there's the knight character of England, and this is the the Robin of that character called Squire. And so it's a really fun book. I can't wait to finish it at this point. I've actually got one more issue to that I'm waiting for to come out. But I did enjoy it. It's very adventure It's very action-based. Not a lot of roadblocks in, in enjoying this. It's pretty straightforward Batman stuff. Batman Fair. I do recommend it. It was a lot of fun. So I, you can't do detective fiction without doing the master detective of all time in all fiction, Sherlock Holmes. So Dynamite is the one that pretty much got the monopoly on the Sherlock Holmes books. And the one I read was called Sherlock Holmes Year One. Now, if you're a Batman fan, you'll recognize the the nod to the Batman Year One miniseries that came out. Great Frank Miller. So this is going to be fun. I, I saw, well, got to do it. Got to get into like his early days because... You don't really ever get that in the Conan Doyle. He's already established as a detective. And this one is interesting. It's basically a thematic murders, which is always kind of fun. And it's all based on the 12 Caesars and how they were killed. And it's it's really fun. I really enjoyed it. You see, at this point, Watson's actually working with the police. And then Sherlock Holmes and, and Watson get put together as part of this, this mystery. But it is a lot of fun. I, I, do, I do highly... Uh, Recommend to check out uh, all the dynamite Sherlock Holmes folks there. It, it, I'm just a just a big Sherlock nerd. I'll get into my other Sherlock recommendations at the end of this show. Now, if you guys happen to be watching ABC a couple years ago and just happen to catch Colby Smolders and Jake Johnson, Colby Smolders, of course, from How I Met Your Mother, and also Agent Maria Hill from the Marvel movies. And Jake Johnson from Jurassic Park or New Girl, they had a great little short run. One, I believe it was one or two seasons, maybe just one, a show called Stumptown. Now, Stumptown is an independent comic from Oni Press, which is, doesn't even exist, exist anymore. But uh, the great Greg Rucka had written this mystery and uh, detective fiction called Stumptown for uh, Portland, Oregon, where he's from. And it's just a great, fun tone. You kind of look at, if you look at the covers, it almost looks like it's going to be more like a Jessica Jones type thing, more of a dark, brooding. But as you get into it, you realize, no, it's not at all. That's just the way that it's kind of colored. And it's just a lot of fun. It's it's this detective, Dex Perios, who's a woman. Imagine that. And she was a soldier, too. A very, I believe, uh, intelligence soldier in the more modern Middle Eastern wars, Iraq. So she's dealing with that. That's the one kind of darkness in it is she's kind of dealing with the PTSD of the things she saw there. But because she is kind of lost her way, she needs something to occupy her time. Now, in this TV series, she didn't originally have a license. She would be getting into trouble trying to investigate things. And the cops got so annoyed with her, they said, get a license, get a detective's license. And then you can, you know, be officially working with us. In the comics, she already has it. I highly recommend this book. It's already in the trades and all that stuff. You'd definitely be able to track it down in it and it was a short-lived thing i believe it only ran for three volumes but it's great she's got this brother who's has down syndrome he's great really loving they lost their parents and so she's been taking care of him his name is ansel and then they have another great friend his name's gray and in the comic book he's a musician they wisely had him run a bar in the in the series so they kind of have a regular place where they can all gather and see each other but yeah i just i highly recommend the another aspect of the comic that's dealt uh, of the area that's dealt with is the native american casino deck was in the service with one of the native americans that was related to the family that the tribe that runs the casino the volume that i read was volume three and it was all about soccer and soccer fans and fandom and one soccer fan, well-known soccer fan in the area, actually gets murdered, and she's investigating his murder and how it's related to the crime in the area, the crime 
bosses and stuff like that. So it, really fun, really good. If you if you look for stuff that's not too heavy but still has great characters, strong, uh, especially strong female characters, definitely highly recommend Stumptown. And if you can track down the series, I'm not sure exactly where you can see it, or probably Hulu. Definitely recommend that. Moving on to another Greg Rucka title, Gotham Central. Greg Rucka and Ed Brubaker both had written this great Gotham police drama comic. It's it's beautiful. If you if you appreciate the finer things in comics, it really feels like a continuation of Batman Year One. But if you're looking for superhero comics, that's not the point of this. The point of this is. What is it like to be a police force in a town that has a superhero? So it's really gritty, day-to-day, procedural in that way, but in the best way. You know, procedural is kind of the P word on this show. You might hear me rant and rave about that. But it's really good. It's it's so... When dialogue sounds like people talking, I can't praise it high enough. It seems to be a difficult thing to do sometimes in comics, it seems to be people think, well, people just want to know the mission objectives and they want to talk very stiff and stilted. These guys talk like you just walk into walked into a precinct. And it's great because the first arc that I read is about a police officer whose partner dies in the midst of a crime. And he's got to deal with the fact that he wants to find, you know, of course, all cops want to find whoever is responsible and hold them responsible and bring about justice in the situation. But he also has to tend with the fact that this is Batman's town as well. So it kind of deals with that drama and tension of him. It's a, it's a Mr. Freeze crime that that's committed and he has to deal with the fact that, you know, which, what is the best thing in this case? Is it, you know, to get, let Batman handle it or try to do it on your own? And it's, it's just great. It's, it's a big full run in this comic. So definitely highly recommend you guys track it down Gotham Central and the other reason to track it down is because there's going to be a series on HBO Max at some point it's it's been talked about in vague terms it hasn't been given they say it's going to be tied into the new Batman movie so I definitely highly recommend you check this book out and then the next book is Luke Cage Noir now some of you guys might have seen Spider-Man Noir in the Spider-Verse movie and wondered what is this and why is Nicolas Cage doing the voice? It is a series that ran through Marvel. They they did Daredevil Noir, Spider-Man Noir, Luke Cage Noir, Wolverine Noir. I haven't delved into the other ones, but for this one, obviously Noir is a detective term, and I had to pick one of them. So I decided to go with Luke Cage Noir just out of curiosity, and I was really pleased with it. It's it they set it in the Harlem Renaissance period, so you know the height of jazz and the Cotton Club and all of that kind of stuff. And they do give nods if you know the time period and and stuff. You'll see like there's a guy. Oh, look, that looks like Duke Duke Ellington and stuff. It's not like overt, but it is there. Really, really strong writing. He basically comes back from being in prison. Luke Cage does and starts. You know, people want him to get back in the game, and he's trying not to, but he just gets caught up in this case, and he gets hired to... It's the way most noir works, is you get hired to help someone accomplish something, but then you find out there's a bigger mystery, and the person that is asking for your help is probably not the most upright citizen. That's kind of what happens here, and it also deals greatly with race and the shades of race shall i say very good i highly recommend it the, and the next one is dead boy detectives sandman is, is rumbling up again there's going to be a series on netflix and there's currently an audiobook of it it was originally a comic uh, written by neil gaiman kind of hard to describe in in one sentence this book you could research it yourself initial part of it involves the fact that there's a family a celestial family there's dream, there's death, there's destiny, all those kind of things. But it's how they interact with humans. And these dead boy detectives came out of the Sandman. But someone decided to go ahead and continue their stories because it sounds like fun, dead boy detectives. So they are literally ghosts. They were killed at different points in history, which I thought was a really cool idea that Gaiman came up with where one was killed, I believe, back in like the maybe turn of the century, and then one was killed in like the 90s. So they're friends, 
and they go around and solve mysteries and stuff. And this volume of it that I read is there's a young woman whose parents are almost criminal artists in a way. They'll do they'll stage some weird crime as a as a performance art piece. Like they literally steal art at some points and stuff. And she's kind of tired of the vagabond lifestyle that she lives with her parents and so she wants to just go to like a boarding school. But she happens upon the boarding school where both of these boys were were killed. So it's fun that you find out like why all of what was happened to them was happening and they're able to kind of solve their own mystery in that way. Really, really enjoyable. The art is great. Feels kind of like Hellboyish art there. Very muted tones. And on the all ages front again, coming back to it. It's called the Baker Street Peculiars, and it's a boombox book. It's a all ages book. It's very cartoony, but the the writing is so good and the vernacular of the time is very good. It's actually set in the 30s. And if you know Sherlock Holmes' is turn of the century, and so this is set a little bit later. Sherlock Holmes does recruit them, but there's like a little mystery about like what's going on with Sherlock Holmes in this. But what's fun in all ages about it is statues are coming to life all over London. And they're trying to find out what it is. And so it actually deals with, in the Jewish tradition, there's the golem. And so it deals with that. And so it's like all of these famous statues in London coming to life. And these three children, they're kind of like the different levels of class. One is from like a very prestigious prep school. And then one is from a poor tailor her grandfather, and then one is basically a legitimate, like, ragamuffin kid on the streets, a little homeless kid. The girl whose grandfather runs the dress shop is a fangirl of Sherlock Holmes, and so she, that's where she comes at it from, and she kind of drags the other two on this mystery and solve what's going on on the streets of London with all of these very fun, very cartoony art. But again, the words, the writing is so very strong, very captured the vernacular of the time. I really, I did enjoy it a lot. Now I was almost done. The Baker Street Peculiars was going to be my last book. And then for whatever reason, I decided to look in my graphic novels and I found Gotham Noir that I'd forgotten about that I owned. Gotham Noir is an Ed Brubaker book, we talked about Ed Brubaker with Gotham Central. Ed Brubaker is, for all you comic book fans or for you Marvel fans, he created the character the Winter Soldier. He did not create Bucky. Bucky was originally like a Robin, a child character, kind of like a sidekick in the original Captain America comics. But he created the adult Winter Soldier Bucky. And this is a short graphic novel. Written by Ed Brubaker and art by Sean Phillips. Very great. Again, in the style, I think these guys just loved Year One so much because that's the style it's written in. But basically, it's what they'd call an Elseworld story. It actually is a part of the Elseworlds line. Elseworlds, again, being DC's What If in a way, but less, it's less overt than What If. What If is really like, what if we did this kind of through this character and in another way. And this one's more like, it seems to be a little bit more sophisticated on the DC side, the Elseworlds. And so this is like, let's just tell a kind of a traditional noir story and use the characters in the Batman world. And James Gordon is the main character of the story. Uh, he had been disgraced with a case that went wrong and lost his job as a police officer. And now he was a basically a detective but he kind of was like on the skids he kind of lost his family he was drinking too much and selena kyle ropes him in to give him kind of like a job of just being an escort for a girl for the night and then it all goes wrong and it all it's all about corruption in the city obviously gotham always has that uh corruption with the crime and also with the politics and even batman does play a role in here He's probably the most shadowy you've ever seen Batman in this because he never really has true human form. He's kind of like just this wraith in a lot of ways. But very good, very, just a great piece of work. Even deals, brings in the whole, the character of Jack Napier that was in 
Tim Burton Batman as well. So definitely highly recommend it. I can't talk about this stuff and just leave it at the book. So I want to talk about some of my favorite mysteries in other media. So one of my favorites, I remember it was in 91. One of my favorite movies at the time was a Kenneth Branagh movie. This was back when he was still married to Emma Thompson. And a great movie called Dead Again. It's one of those you might have to rent. I don't believe it's available on a streaming service. It might be on HBO Max right now. But it's one of those that's really hard to talk about. But it's, it deals with a crime that happened in the past and how it affects in the future. That's basically how it I would, I would, the way I would describe it. It's really, really great. It's got Andy Garcia as a journalist that's investigating the crime in the past and a great one of the greatest i think performances by robin williams that a lot of people probably don't know about where he's kind of this paranormal expert happens to be working in a grocery store and but kenneth brown plays a private investigator in the modern day and he starts investigating something that ties back to a crime in the past it's just it's great it's a lot of fun the past is all in black and white and another great performance as well by Derek Jacobi, who is in a lot of Kenneth Branagh's movies and played even a detective as well, a detective monk on the BBC series Cad File. If you ever want to look that up, that's another great one as well. Cad File I got into because of my love for this great movie from the 80s called The Name of the Rose, which is Sean Connery plays a monk. It's written by an Italian man named Roberto Eco, and this character is William of Baskerville, so it's obviously a nod to Sherlock Holmes, but this is the 13th century, so it predates Sherlock Holmes, and he is visiting a monastery, and there's a big council going to be happening in the church, in the Catholic church, and he's a Benedictine monk, so he's the one that takes the vow of poverty but some deaths start happening around the monastery and they seem to be tied into the apocalypse and so there's different sides to what's going on of like these factions start forming of like whether it's really the end of days or somebody's murdering people it's just great it's got christian slater as well in it the great ron perlman as well playing the hunchback and the kind of like the one that knows what's going on, but he speaks in in gibberish a lot of the time, so you can't really uh, tell what he's saying. But it's just great. It's if you like old school mystery, I highly recommend it. Definitely for rental. I don't believe it's available anywhere. I keep keep ticking off my friend because I keep m- mentioning that I'm watching it, and he's like, "Where, where, where can I see this?" And he can't, unfortunately, it, except on the uh, uh, rental. I'm always down for a good spoof. If there's a great spoof called Murder by Death from the from the 70s. It's all the great murder mystery detectives from like The Thin Man to Charlie Chan to like Sam Spade, but they're all spoofed in this murder mystery. In this, they all come to this mansion to solve a, a mystery. One of my great, my favorite puns in it is. The guy that owns the mansion where they come, his name is Lionel Twain, which if you know anything about miniature trains, Lionel Trains are those. And and when you look at his address, it says 22 Twain. So stuff like that, stuff on that level. It's a, it's a fun uh, spoof. Another great one that I enjoyed that a lot of people don't seem to know about is it comes from the early 80s. It's called Death Trap. It's Michael Caine. And I would say really shortly after he played Superman, Christopher Reeve, and the actress Diane Cannon in this great murder mystery about murder mystery playwright. And it's just a fun little small piece with just like very few characters. But uh, I really enjoyed it a lot. And you can't talk about Greatest Detectives without talking about Columbo. Columbo is now, thankfully, you can watch it, all of it. Uh, including a TV movie that started it off that was originally, I guess, based on a play on Peacock. And the trick of Columbo is it's all about pride and ego because you actually find out who the murderer is in the beginning of each episode. But the trick is you've got this schlumpy little detective and the murderers are all so sure they're going to get away with everything. It's got this level of pride on the highest level 
that they think this little local detective with this wrinkled overcoat and his cigars and his seeming forgetfulness, that there's no way he could solve their master murders. And you see how he just comes in almost in an undercover way and totally dismantles these people's evil plans. He's so great. I highly recommend you guys check out Columbo on Peacock. Now, my favorite growing up, it has to be, I mean, I did like I did like the concept of Sherlock, but didn't really come to him until later in the 80s. But one of my favorite detectives is Magnum P.I. Now, there is a newer Magnum that isn't bad, but I do enjoy the Tom Selleck. It's the way they wrote this guy was kind of great because he is skilled because he was naval intelligence in Vietnam. So he has all the skills that he needs, but they also make him always indebted to his friends like literally monetarily like always playing on favors he lives in a mansion and it's like basically because he befriended this novelist that owns this mansion he he's the head of security of the mansion but he's always at odds with basically the major domo he's the beyond butler he he manages the estate for this novelist so he's always at odds always getting in trouble with his friends and stuff but just a great, great series. I, I love it so much. They deal with his past, with Vietnam a lot. One of the, my favorite mysteries was you see, for some reason, he's all of a sudden in the 30s trying to solve this mystery, and you don't know why. They never give you, they never tell you why he, he is. And then halfway through the episode, he wakes up and he's been investigating this, this old crime. And what you'd seen was kind of like his dream where he was working out some of the stuff and he'd figured it out and actually solves the the crime that was never solved back in the day. It's it's a lot of fun. A great animated two movie series in the Batman genre, Long Halloween, is currently on HBO Max. I highly recommend it. It's been one of those graphic novels that were in my little group that I held on to for a long time. It's so great. It's a crime story, so it's more about the the mafia of Gotham, and it's basically somebody's killing people on holidays. So it's the long Halloween where it starts with one Halloween and ends with, so it goes a full year to the next Halloween, but definitely, definitely check it out on HBO Max. Not all of those movies are, are worth recommending, but this one is great. Great acting. The voice acting in it is great, and the art is great as well. If you really like murder mystery stuff and haven't tracked down some good stuff, one another great source is the Agatha Christie's. Now, you can find Agatha Christie all over the BBC. I believe Acorn and Britbox have, have those. Poirot and the Mrs. Marple. Also, there's, back to Kenneth Branagh, he did the murder on Orient Express that came out a couple of years back and will be coming out with a new one, Death on the Nile, soon as well. That's the Poirot Mysteries. And this one you might have to rent. I'm sure you'd have to rent if you can track it down, but it's great two-season series that was on A&E back in the day. You know, Leverage and you know, Timothy Hutton from Leverage, he did this thing. He actually produced it. It was his deal. Rex Stout is the author of the novels, of the Nero Wolf novels, and this great Nero Wolf series. That I like when things are well thought out. A lot of people talk about, and they just assume that the whole Marvel, the MCU, is planned from the beginning, and that is not exactly true. But in this case, what was really neat about this is they planned it and the series out very well, where they basically said, okay, listen, we're going to do these as long as you guys will let us, but we're just going to hire this group of actors. And they'll play different characters each time. In the theater world, it's called like having a repertory company. And that's what they did. So like in every episode, you'll see, oh, there's that actor or actress, but they're playing a different role. It's so fun. So Nero Wolf is this character that basically like agoraphobic. He doesn't want to leave the house. He prefers not to. He prefers everybody to come to him. There are very seldom occasions where he does leave the house, so he has his man that that goes out, and that's who Timothy Hutton plays. The actor that plays Nero Wolf in this, you might recognize him from Dances with Wolves. It's the kind of like mad colonel that allows Kevin Costner's character to go out to the wilderness, but uh, it's a great actor. Just It's just so fun. Very lighthearted. These are like silly, silly at times, but just fun. Like They did as best as they could. With, I'm sure they didn't have the highest budget, but 
The costumes are great. The the tone is great. The characters are great. Highly recommend Nero Wolf. So the first mysteries that I probably ever read or saw was the Hardy Boys. They actually had a 70s TV show when I was a kid. And I'm not sure that must have been my first introduction to them. But then my school library, they had the books. And I just loved them so much. The, I'm still... To this day, even though, you know, I'm 50-something years of age, I still like the whole concept of kids taking things into their own hands and investigating. That's why I loved the part of the Order of the Phoenix when they start Dumbledore's army. I, I love that stuff. So I didn't read Nancy Drew much, but I did read the, a couple of the Hardy Boys when I was a kid. And there are currently two series, one of each, Hardy Boys and Nancy Drew, that are available to watch. I've watched both of them, and I do enjoy both of them. They're they're really good. Uh, Hardy Boys is a little bit younger level, whereas Nancy Drew, she's written as an adult. I do highly recommend the books for your kids. If you're starting to have kids and you want them to read uh, cool mysteries and stuff like that for kids are great for that. And as I mentioned earlier, the Sherlock Holmes is one of my favorite characters, but it did not come to him until later, like in the 80s. On Disney Channel, they put this BBC show called The Adventures of Sherlock Holmes, and the actor that plays him is named Jeremy Brett. If you're a musical fan and you've seen the musical My Fair Lady, he is the young suitor of Eliza Doolittle, is the actor. But the way he plays Sherlock Holmes is just is amazing because he plays him eccentric. For my money, he's my favorite of the more traditional Sherlock Holmes. It's just great. Um, they are, are available on BritBox if you do want to watch them. There's quite a few of them. There's movies and individual episodes as well so they're like about hour-long episodes some of our actual movies they kind of just they i think they were so popular that they just kept them going so definitely highly recommend those and for other sherlock's there's of course the robert downey juniors that are probably the most famous just because they had the biggest launch with the biggest actors and guy ritchie directing but i also highly recommend uh, if you're in the marvel universe and or the tolkien universe if you have not yet seen the bbc sherlock show which is a modern day adaptation of the sherlock character it's very smart a lot of times when they do a modern take on anything they try to like overplay the modern side of it the technology or whatever this one more does a nod and a wink with it makes it kind of a joke out of it but really serious some genuinely creepy episodes really well handled there's four seasons of that i believe you'd have to rent those right now they are not currently available on normal streaming channels the cumberbatch as uh, sherlock holmes amazing martin freeman's equally amazing as martin freeman's watson watson kind of always gets the you know he's the sidekick in a lot of the ways even in conan doyles he's he's there he's he's kind of our character our entry into sherlock the world the normal guy uh the steadfast cohort but in this one amazing he the the emotional depths that martin freeman gets to in this character is really really great and very funny lots of humor as well and that'll be it for this episode of spin Rack kids we'll be back later to do the the next episode's probably going to be all ages at this point don't know the name of the episode we'll get there but till then keep spinning so thank you for listening to elated geek Follow us on social media for pictures and more info on things we talked about in today's podcast. You can find Laney on at Zany Laney or me at One True Hazard. You can also find at Elated Geek on our Instagram. And you can also find Elated Geek Tweets on Twitter. If you want to go to a website, we have www.elatedgeek.com. Links for these are in the show notes. If you want to help us to continue to bring you new and exciting things to nerd out about, please consider donating to our coffee account. The link is in the show notes, and every donation is accepted with total appreciation for your support in us. Send us your geek obsessions or topics that you want us to experience and talk about in future episodes. Email us at share at And until next time, geek out.